Hello everyone, now for the first time ever, this is actually the first properly serious video I think I've ever done and also you don't get to see my beautiful face which may delight some of you to be honest with you. Now this is my explanation of C7 from the OCR 21st century science syllabus. Now before I go any further I'd like to say I am not an expert in this, not at all. Okay, I'm most probably in the same position as you are. I just thought it may be helpful to everyone and that it would be nice for me to show my interpretation of this topic because there are, quite a few, there are some people who um, find it a bit difficult. So, you know, it may help you to advise. But, um, so please correct me if I make any mistakes because the likelihood is that I will. Now, this is actually my third time of shooting this darn video. Because, um, well, first time I deleted the video by accident, and second time I tried to upload it, but it's going to take five hours. So, this is me with my little iPad here, getting all technological. Okay, here we go. So, I've already filled in these blanks, but I'm going to go through it anyway. Sorry if this camera's a bit fuzzy, that's my, not really camera skills, iPad skills, or tablet skills, whatever this thing's called. Okay. So the difference between propane, ethanol and ethanoic acid is just by looking at them. Pretty easy. Let's go for the first one. Propane is an alkane. So there you go. The type of molecule is an alkane. Now, trope, monkeys eat peeled bananas. So that means propane has three carbon atoms. The amount of hydrogen atoms depends on its general formula. And the general form formula for a hydrogen ion is H2N plus 2. So basically, 2 times 3 plus 2, which, as I've clearly written here, it's 8. Now that makes sense when you look at its structural formula. I think of it... God, that's my head. Two, the 2N two stands for the two hydrogens on either side of the carbon. There you go, one there, one there. One there and one there. The plus 2 stands for the hydrogen atoms at the end, on each end of the chain. There you go. Let's go for this one. Methanol. Oh, it's an alcohol, of course. Lee. Of course, I don't really know that much about alcohols whatsoever. Mm. <clears throat> Perfectly sober me. Now, meth. Meth monkeys. That's one. So one carbon atom. But it's an alcohol. It's a little bit different. But I mean just a little bit different. The only difference is really one oxygen mo molecule has decided to stick itself in there. Um, so the formula, general formula for an alcohol is CnH2n plus 1. Because that other 1 that's missing, which is the difference between that and an alkane, is used in this OH functional group. That is its functional group. And that makes sense when you look at it. Basically, that is just methane with an oxygen between a carbon and a hydrogen. That's all it is. Ethanoic acid is a carboxylic acid, another organic chemical. Now, S means two carbon atoms. But you have to write it as if you do one carbon atom at the start because this is a COOH functional group. A cool functional group. So that's always put at the end. Whatever carbons of the acid you come across will always have that cool at the end. So if you draw it out, it looks a little bit weird. The three hydrogen atoms are here, clearly. But the last carbon atom is always a bit weird. There's a double bonded oxygen. What that basically means is in the covalent bonds, that oxygen isn't sharing one electron, but two electrons. And we've also got an O then connected to an H. So that double bond makes up for how there are only technically two atoms connected to this carbon. In here, this carbon has three, the three hydrogens. But it's a double bond, it sort of makes up for it. Let's go on to here. Sorry if you're finding this fuzzy. It's going to get a lot fuzzy. Okay, right, here we go. 
Alkanes are very unreactive compounds due to very unreactive CC and CH bonds. That is just true. I think you just need to learn that, I think. They form layers when added to water and don't react with acid or sodium. So that relates to the formulas you need to find out. You need to know the reactions between an alcohol and sodium and water and sodium. Obviously not an alkane and sodium because they don't react at all. Hydrocarbons, like alkanes, do burn well in oxygen to form carbon, dioxide and water. That's your combustion reaction. That's You need to know the reaction of an alkane with oxygen. That basically just gives carbon dioxide and water. The OH part of alcohols, alcohols mean, don't form layers in water. No. The OH part of alcohols means that alcohols don't form layers in water and will react with sodium to produce hydrogen gas and a sodium alkoxide. They burn in oxygen due to the hydrocarbon chain. Carboxylic acids react like normal acids with metals and metal compounds, but they are weak acids. That means they can be reversible. Now, we're not going to talk about that, if that, if that much in this video, but you will need to know about it for this module. Now, this table I'm just going to go up pretty quickly. To make an ester, you have to mix a carboxylic acid and an alcohol together. Now, the name of the ester depends on the alcohol and the carboxylic acid involved. So if you've got ethanoic acid and propanol, the alcohol comes first, and that has an il at the end of it, propyl, and then the carboxylic acid has an anoate at the end of it, so ethanoate. So ethanoic acid and propanol gives propyl ethanoate. Let's go on this one, totally the other way around. Propanoic acid and ethanol equals ethyl ethanoate. Ethyl, the alcohol, propanoate, the carboxylic acid. And that's pretty much the same all along this table. Now this part is definitely the hardest part. Because you see, when you're mixing a, car a carboxylic acid and an alcohol together to make an ester, it's not really that simple. There are four stages involved. That's reflux, distill, purify, and dry. Now, I don't know how you can remember those four steps. The best thing I've come up with is really do practice dancing. I'm sure you can come up with something a little bit better than that because I'm no Wordsworth, to be honest with you. Well, not really, no chemist, to be honest with you. I don't know why the hell I'm doing this. Okay. Now, now I don't think they'll give you the reflux part first. They'll probably get you to mix your carboxylic acid and your alcohol together because that's what you're going to have to do to start off with at the end of the day. It's just like making a recipe. You can't do it without your ingredients, can you? So, the first one is obviously B. Add your ethanol and ethanoic acid because we're making ethyl ethanoate. Ethyl ethanoate. She's a nice lady, you know. Lovely woman. Okay. Ethyl ethanoate. Okay. Then D is next. Carefully add a small amount of concentrated sulfuric acid catalyst. Sulfuric acid is a great catalyst. So I've been told. It lowers the activation energy by providing alternative routes. So less energy is needed to start a reaction because it gives the, the reactant substance to stick to, so which increases the chance of collision. So anyway, that's more C6 than anything else. G. Fit a reflux condenser to the flask and heat for 10 minutes. What that basically does is as the mixture is heated, unreacted particles go up the condenser, which haven't been reacted. Now, to be all nice and sustainable, that condenser recycles those unreacted particles back into the flask, so everything reacts. Now, A, distill the reaction mixture and transfer distillate to a separate funnel. Distillation is basically, it's heated again, then the vapors go up a fractionating column. As it goes up the fractionating column, <clears throat> the, thing, the, the mixture cools down, so some falls back down into the flask. But ethyl ethanoate, as it has a lower boiling point than anything else, that will stay as a gas. And when it goes through a condenser, it will get turned into a liquid. However, this is still impure ethyl ethanoate. Now, what's next? E. Redistill to get pure ester products. Okay, fair enough. Good show. F. 
Add sodium carbonate solution and then calcium chloride solution, discarding the aqueous layer each time. Basically, sodium carbonate get rid of, gets rid of the unreacted acid, and calcium chloride gets, gets rid of the unreacted alcohol that's still in that impure ethyl ethanoate. They separate out, and then they can then be tapped off. So you're purifying. Okay, because we just want pure ethyl ethanoate here. C. Transfer to a flask and dry using anhydrous calcium chloride. That gets rid of any excess water, because remember, carboxylic acid and an alcohol gives an ester plus water, so that we're going to have water in there as well. Don't need that, because we just want a pure solid of ethyl ethanoate. And then ethyl ethanoate can then be taken just through filtration. Okay, that's pretty much done. I hope you find that useful. Correct me if I've made any mistakes. It's likely I have. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope it was helpful.